Here we will consider the kinematics of objects rolling without slip. When we say that an object is rolling without slip, we are saying that there is no relative sliding motion between the point of contact on the object and the surface. So what we're going to do here is consider a cylinder with radius r and angular velocity omega and angular acceleration alpha. So the motion is to the left. Now, although one may be tempted to think that this is fixed axis rotation, the motion of rolling without slip is general planar motion. And that is true when it's observed from a fixed reference point. That is, the cylinder simultaneously translates and rotates. What we're going to do is look at point G. So this point moves in a straight line to the left from G to G prime. So this is the horizontal displacement that we're interested in. So how far does the geometric center move between these two points in time? So what you can imagine is that at if this is time one and this is time two, at time one, this point, denoted by A, is in contact with the ground. As it rolls, the next point's going to be in contact, and then the following point, and so on, and so forth. And this is denoted at point T2 by the colored red arc. Okay, so now these points are in the back, because the, the cylinder is rotating counterclockwise. So the points that have been in contact with the ground are colored in red. And what you'll notice is that the arc length denoted by A prime B, colored in red on the rim, is equivalent to the distance SG that is traveled by the center of the cylinder. So we know that the arc length is denoted by r delta theta. So we can say that a prime b, okay, so the length along the arc of all points that were in contact with the ground is equal to r multiplied by theta. So thus we can say that sg is equal to r theta. So the displacement sg is equal to the arc length that is traced during that period in time. So we're often interested in velocities and accelerations. So um, the velocity of point G is just going to be obtained by taking the derivative of R theta, which is the displacement. Now R does not change. Okay, we're dealing with a rigid body. So we just have d theta by dt, which gives us omega, the angular velocity. Taking the successive derivative, so if we take ag, AG we're going to again take the derivative, but now of r omega, and this will give us r alpha. So these are valid only for rolling without slip. And these are very useful relationships. Now you may have, may have noticed something interesting. So although rolling without slip is general planar motion, have a look at the velocity. The velocity 
at the center of mass g is equal to omega r. Now recall that for fixed axis rotation, the velocity of a certain point is equal to omega crossed with r. So what this is saying is that for general planar motion, for rolling without slip, the velocity at the center of mass mimics the velocity obtained for fixed axis rotation, where the fixed axis in this point is the point of contact between the cylinder and the ground. The acceleration does not mimic fixed axis rotation as the velocity does. Okay, recall that the acceleration has two components. We have the normal component and we have the tangential component. And here we're only seeing one component for the, um, for the acceleration of the center of mass, which is R alpha, which looks a lot like the tangential component. So these are very important relationships to keep in mind when solving uh, rolling problems without slip. So let's look at an example to try to solidify this concept. So here we have a disk that is rolling and accelerating with an angular velocity of 3 radians per second counterclockwise and an angular acceleration of 8 radians per second squared. It is rolling without slip at point A and we're asked to find the acceleration at point B. Okay, so this is general planar motion. Okay, it is translating and rotating, but we've just developed some important relationships for uh, rolling without slip. So we know that if we call this equation 1 over here, we know that from 1, the acceleration at the center of mass is going to be equal to alpha crossed with r. And here, if we want to be very precise, we would say r of g with respect to a, where g is the center and A is the point of contact. We are given alpha in the problem statement here. So it's 8 radians per second counterclockwise. So that can be expressed as 8 in the positive k direction. But what we'll do is that let's just leave things symbolic for now and then we'll substitute things in later on. So we'll just say alpha k crossed with capital R in the J direction. So we are going from A to G. And that is our relationship for the acceleration at the center of mass. And there's nothing unknown here. So we are given alpha and we have the geometry, which lets us find uh, the radius of the disk. So now what we can do, so recall that the, rigid, the, the body is undergoing general planar motion. So for general planar motion, we can find the acceleration of point B if we know the acceleration of another point. So recall that the acceleration of a certain point on the rigid body is equal to the acceleration of a reference point, we'll call this AG, plus the relative acceleration of B with respect to G. So AG will be taken from 2. So we will have alpha K 
crossed with rj plus the relative acceleration. So recall relative acceleration mimics fixed axis rotation between the two points. So here we will have alpha of the body crossed with r of b with respect to g. Right, so we know g, g is our reference point, so we're going from g to b, minus omega squared r of b with respect to g. So this here is the acceleration at the center. And this here is the relative acceleration of B with respect to G. So now it's only a matter of taking the cross products, look at it, looking at our um, geometry to figure out the relative position vectors r of b with respect to g and evaluating the acceleration. So I'm going to give myself a bit more space here. I'm going to say a b is equal to I'm going to set up my triangle here for the cross products and establish the positive direction. So for a g we have k crossed with j so that will give us a negative i. So we have negative alpha r in the i direction. Okay. And now we're on to the relative acceleration. So we have alpha, and that is in the k direction, crossed with, so now we have to go back to our schematic here. So we're going, we're looking for r of b with respect to g, which means we are going from g to b. So we know that this is r over here. So the i component is going to be given by the dotted red line which from geometry we can see is r sine of 45. And the j component is given by this dotted red line, which will be obtained by r cosine of 45. So we have r sine of 45 in the i direction. And then we're going from g to b in the negative j direction. So negative r cosine of 45 in the j direction. Minus omega squared multiplied by, again, the relative position vector, r sine 45 in the i direction minus r cosine 45 in the j direction. And there we are. So we have to carry out our cross products over here. And we're going to group like terms. So I'm going to do this right away. I'm going to look for the i terms. So we have our first i term right above alpha r. Now let's have a look. Um, k crossed with i will not give us an i term, but k crossed with j will, and it will give us a negative i term. But note that we also have a negative here, so it will give us a positive. So we have plus alpha r cosine of 45. And then over here we have our last, in the second bracket, we have our last i term, which will be minus omega squared r 
sine of 45. All of this in the i direction. Then we combine our j terms. So k crossed with i will give us a positive j. So we have alpha r sine 45. And then in the second bracket here, we have a j term. We have a negative and a negative will give us a positive. So plus omega squared r cosine of 45 and both of these in the j direction. And all we need to do is substitute, substitute our values. Okay, so we know alpha, it's given in the problem. We know r, it's given in the problem. And omega, and the rest is just geometry. And we find that the acceleration of point B is equal to minus 4.35 in the i direction plus 6j in the j direction, meters per second squared. And this is how we employed the useful relationships that we derived for rolling without slip for a rolling problem. Okay, so Purely from geometry, we noted that the red arc length must be equal to the displacement of uh, the geometric center, G. So the displacement was just a matter of calculating the arc length, R theta. Taking successive derivatives, we're able to find the velocity of the center of mass and the acceleration of the center of mass.